Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC South. It's the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. Coming up next. Just a stone's throw from historic Monument Circle in downtown Indianapolis. We are at the beautiful Lucas Oil Stadium. Today, it's a good matchup in the AFC South between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And we are underway from Indianapolis. Well, now how about this return? And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by an 11th-year passer in the league now. Still best remembered for his heroics in Super Bowl 52, of course. Nick Foles. When you look at Nick Foles' career in total, you wonder to yourself at times, why has he not been a consistent starter in the league? Because when he's on, he can take a team to the Super Bowl and win it, as he did with Philadelphia. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Foles. Oh, this is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, they're often taught. 11 on the field. Those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. Throwing again on second down. Foles. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to throw the ball, but Kansas is tied in. But now it'll be third down. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Now Foles. Catch made here by Campbell. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Call it a pickup of three and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. Well, able to get the completion, but unfortunately not able to get the third down conversion there on that play. And I like how the defense approached that one. They knew where the first down marker was, and they decide whatever you want to have, you can. You're just not going to get the first down. Excellent tackling right there. On the return, it's King. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. 
So here come the Texans now for their first drive. Leading them out in his second season now out of Stanford. Here's Davis Mills. And remember, when he came out of college, he left early. So a lot of people weren't really paying attention to this young man, but he was entrusted with a leadership role early in his NFL career and didn't shy away from it. His goal, continue to prove that there should have been one more quarterback that went in the first round of the 2021 draft. First and 10 now for Mills and the Texans. At about the 32. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of four on the first down play. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. First play in the drive, lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Mills to throw it. That's caught. It's Chris Moore. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. On third down, here's Mills. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And some room to work. And they are going to score on the fumble return. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And this is good to make it 7 0 ending. The scoop and score. Always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there. Grabbing it off the ground and then rolling it into the end zone for six. the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score from the 10 and he brings us out past the 20 to the 24 so now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game on first down. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. A first down throw for Mills. 
to the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feed down complete. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. Opening carry of the game here for Rex Burkhead. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. And now a stoppage, and looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, is going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Territory. Here's a first and ten at the 46. Out of the shotgun, a give to Burkhead. Bobby O'Karake making that tackle. And that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, holding them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. To throw, Mills. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Try to pick it up on the ground with Burkhead. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Mills, and his pass incomplete. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Mills. And Cooks has it over the middle. 
And they'll get him to the ground, and he has another first down at the Colts 21. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Back to the ground with Pierce. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a game of just one. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. That's not the first time they've gone his way on this drive, and they were obviously keyed into it because they were there to help break that pass up. Mills to the sideline, and out now is Kaimi Fairbairn for the Houston field goal try. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Fairbairn now following the main field goal. He'll send this one away. This is taken just shy of the 10. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit jumpy. Oh, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> a carry by Taylor to start the drive. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second down, another run with Taylor. And at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. That one, a first down pickup of eight. After one, seven, three, the score. EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. Foles. Campbell making the catch. And they're going to get this up to midfield. 
Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if we talk about finding the soft spot defensively, how do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Got an open man. That's Campbell. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Malik Collins able to run him down for a 15-yard loss, and it will be fourth down. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. Not too shabby here. This will skip out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first and ten, Mills. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing, Mills. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and ten. Looking to throw his mills. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be in. 
incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Had to pass there third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. It'll be a net of 40 yards following a punt of 44. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play because if you get those pass rushers second guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. They'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder. You think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him. And I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. On is the putter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. Give to Burkhead on first down. And that won't buy him much room. Just a one-yard gain to the five. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. On second and nine, Mills. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. And there's an incompletion point here, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Here's Mills. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And he'll go out of bounds after getting this across the 15. First down, Mills. And that is incomplete. Now the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Mills to the air again. His throw incomplete. 
feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. Pick up the first down. Guess what? You're likely going to have to. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. On third down, here's Pierce. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk about what to do next. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Forty-three yards on the punt, seven-yard return, and it will be first and ten as they take over. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Had an open man that time, man. They're putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So, line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. There's Foles. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. Five yards, now it's third and five. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Now Foles. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw again. Now this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. I've worked with you long enough now to know you like that decision. Go safe pressure coming. Hit your guy underneath. It's an excellent decision, but he knew it came with consequences. And that's him getting hit on the play, but able to dump it to his running back and gain some yardage. I liked everything about it, especially his ability to stay in the pocket and execute. Catch made here by Camden. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It'll be a pickup of four. I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, ruling on the field is reversed. So that challenge is successful one. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Again, he'll drop to throw. And that will be incomplete with the clock showing 18 seconds now to go. How about this deal with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. 
And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. And we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of the half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. A fairly short kick from the 14. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. So we hit halftime here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Houston. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they too have found passing lanes to be hard to cover. As you see by the numbers, they'll need to figure that out in the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. Fielded right around the eight. And able to get this out to the 25. And the Texans getting ready to go here to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. Well, that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And with a guy his size, you have to know defensively that arm tackles aren't going to fly with him. You have to be able to wrap up, or else he can just brush tacklers aside like they're not even there. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Off the play fake, Mills. 
He's going to look deep for more. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third day. We've seen these defenses making up opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball. And we see yet another errant throw as a result. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They go play action. Mills. This is caught inside the 15. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So a little extra on top of the big play there. It's tough for guys rushing the passer, but you have to know when the ball is gone. And if you listen, officials will tell you ball's gone. He didn't pull up. Now Mills. Dance. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. DeForest Buckner picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, it still definitely hurts. They'll try again on second and goal backwards to the 12. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll be dropped at about the 11. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on the back because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked him up by Stephon Gilmore. And the Colts are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. They were well aware of the scoreboard as it went into halftime. And they know how tough it's been to put up any kind of points. But if there's a positive after that play, is that they were able to take a shot at the end zone on their opening drive of this half. The negative, though, that shot at six ended in an interception. And we know that's not going to jumpstart this struggling offense. First and 10, Taylor now. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line. Second and a yard. They run once more with Taylor. They find some open field here. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 41 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll set up to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball. But surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. He'll look to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. That's a nice design there. Like so you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. 
In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Foles. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Texans offense set to regain possession. As this offense takes the field again, CD, remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing to battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in this second half. They'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. First down throw for Mills. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They're giving him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. To throw on second and ten. Mills. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. And they'll get him to the ground. He had a first down at the Colts 43. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Stiller to their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Pierce now up the middle. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. From the 39, Mills. And his throw here is incomplete. Just what they need a left turn from me, but some far offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing to trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Mills to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. I think it's safe to say they've made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one. Not to have another turnover on his ledger. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And that'll bring him back within four. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive.
Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. From the six. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 50 yards on the ground for him so far. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. the play fake he'll look to throw open man is Taylor he's got it and he is going to have a Colts first down and comfortably so as he gets five there on third of the yard well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game and there he picks up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They're going to look to throw. And he will not be able to get away as Foles has taken down. Christian Harris there finding his way home to record the sack. third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot but it's third down. I know conventional wisdom says hey don't get it all back in one play but sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. This offense so far on third down, they've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and 16. That's complete to Pierce. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to make it fourth down. You hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the Texans will take over. And now out comes Houston. And their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth-quarter lead. To 10 now for Mills and the Texans at their 25-yard line. 
They'll get things started with a carry by Pierce. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Looking to throw his mills. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Mills. That's complete. It's Collins. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Second and nine. Mills. Throw left side complete. That's Howard. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, to watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the locks, too. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Here's Mills. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Grover Stewart getting in there for the sack. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. A sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Mills now. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. The partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Now on Flom, they'll look to throw. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of rush. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on the punt for Houston. And here's Rodgers on the return. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And that will come the offense as they take over. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. 
Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal? In the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the that's caught inside the 20. And they're gonna get this down inside the 20. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years, and the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And that's how you start a drive, because you know they had this play in their back pocket, waiting for the right time to unleash it. And boy, did they pick the right opportunity. Unleashed it big time, and that was also a big time throw. And that throw, pretty impressive, and even 61 yards through the air. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. They bounce and the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold them up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor, and he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll run here with Taylor. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Again, it's Taylor. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. That's a gain of four here in the fourth quarter with them leading by four on the scoreboard. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying it around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball? And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor taking it in from a yard out. And the Colts get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat. Chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. McLaughlin for the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17 to 6. 
So this drive spans seven plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Holding. So already not the best of kick returns there, but that penalty, that adds insult to injury and backs him up even closer to the goal line. Yeah, not ideal field position to begin a drive, is it? Because the extra pressure now goes on the offense. They've got to get some early yards and get away from the shadow of their own goal post. What every offense wants to do in this situation, get two first downs to help out with field position at the least. He's got a man complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That goes for a gain of 31. As we've seen over the years, offense coordinators will often ease their way into drives. Many of them don't want to risk a turnover or put their defense in a bad spot, but not in this case. Not at all. Forget about easing into it. They took a shot. It worked. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, they've certainly had trouble unlocking this defense through three and a half quarters. So I don't expect them to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything, and they force an incompletion there. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing. Mills. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So now third and ten. A big play start the drive, but nothing since. Mills to the air again. Mills can't get away, and down he goes. He could not get away that time, and it'll be a loss of a run on third down. Charles, in these lower scoring games, you know it better than anybody. Yeah, points are at such a premium, but taking care of the football is king. They play turnover free from whistle to whistle, and they come through with a victory. Yeah, and that's what won them the game, because even doing it that way, being that clean partner, they weren't able to really run away with this game. So that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake-free football that led to the victory.